Welcome to Confessions of a Frustrated Game Master. I am Robert, the narrator, and thank you for joining me for another episode of Confessions. Well, this episode of Confessions, as the title says, we're going to talk about fun versus balance as it relates to tabletop role playing games. Now, sometimes it is weird where uh, the idea for a video comes from. The idea for this video actually came from a collectible card game, not a tabletop role playing game. I'll tell you what I mean. So I was playing a collectible card game called Vampire the Eternal Struggle with uh, a couple of players who are actually from my local group tabletop role-playing game group, a group that I've played with for many, many, many years. And uh, Vampire the Eternal Struggle, I think, is the second collectible card game of all time, the first being Magic the Gathering. And actually, Magic the Gathering and um, Vampire the Eternal Struggle were created by the same game designer, a gentleman named uh, Richard Garfield. Uh, So this is the card that caused the dispute. Come on over. It's time to shine, buddy. Come on over. Don't be shy. Yeah, he's, he's a little shy. All right, stop. Cool. All right. So this card called Malkavian Game is the card uh, that caused uh, the rules uh, dispute in the game. Before we get uh, any further into that, I just to give you a little bit of context, I want to tell you just a little bit about Vampire the Eternal Struggle. So uh, in Vampire the Eternal Struggle, uh, it, the game, of course, uh, was inspired by the classic role playing game Vampire the Masquerade. Uh, the players play ancient vampires called Methuselahs, and it's a multiplayer game. Uh, it, it, the game is really fun, I would say, with four or more uh, players. And you start with uh, each player starts with 30 blood. And um, the object of the game is to oust the player to your uh, left by reducing <clears throat> their blood pool to zero. And it's really a unique mechanic because all of the Methuselahs have to pay everything with their blood pool of their starting blood pool of 30. So to bring out other vampires to do their bidding, to pay for equipment, to pay for other cards, you have to pay for your blood pool and your blood pool gets attacked by your predators or the player to your rights, um, other vampires and minions and so forth. So it kind of um, simulates this this spiral to oblivion. So it's, it's a really cool game. I, I really love it. It's no longer in print. But uh, this card, Malkavian Game, is part of the game, obviously. And what Malkavian Game says, uh, you probably can read, is that um, two Methuselahs play a game of rock, scissors, paper, the winner gets two blood from the loser. And if you tie during the game of rock, scissors, paper, you increase the amount that you're playing for by one and continue playing. And where the dispute came up is uh, my, one of my friends in the game, he loves um, to find ways around rules or how can I say this? He, he definitely prioritizes fun over rules. He, I like to say he, he's never seen a rule that he did not want to break. What he wanted to do was to play a game against his prey, the person that he has to oust. And that person was at five pool at that point. And he said, Hey, why don't we fake multiple results of the game of rock, scissors, paper up to the point where you're at five in either you're ousted or I'm ousted from the game. That's where the rules dispute uh, came up. Um, If you know anything about me, you know that I am a guy who likes to play all games uh, raw, rules as written, because I assume that most games that I play were uh, competently play tested and the designers have found all of the uh, the pitfalls and problems. And so the, the reason that the game is the way that it is, is because 
the designers and the playtesters know that there are pitfall pitfalls that could happen if the rules aren't adhered to. And one of the pitfalls that I saw with uh, Malkavian game is that if you are allowed to fake multiple results and then play for a huge amount of um, blood at the end and the, the, the winner gets it that from the loser, there is actually nothing stopping a player from playing this card really early and saying, hey, does somebody want 15, 20, 25 of my pool? And of course, there is nothing stopping players from doing that. But do you want to play a game where the game can be incredibly unbalanced by such an innocuous card? Now, to be fair, a couple of the other players, including the friend that I'm referring to who really loves fun over game rules, their argument was the rule book says nothing about you not being able to talk across the table and say, hey, I'm going to choose rock every time so that your opponent knows. And the card doesn't say anything about not being able to do that. Well, I, I my dispute of that argument is that rule books are not in the habit of telling you what you can't do in a game because they would be 300 pages long if that were the case. Uh, the rule book doesn't say that I can't grab your deck and throw it across the room, but I think we all know in the spirit of the game, you can't do that. And the other thing is, is that I think the card is being incredibly explicit as to what you can and can't do with the card. The card says, instructs you to play rock, scissors, paper. I think if you ask a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand people who are familiar with the mini game of rock, scissors, paper, what the instruction to play rock, scissors, paper would be, I don't think any of them would say, oh, that means play, um, falsify multiple results and then play rock, scissors, paper. So I think that the card is giving you instruction on what to do because no, uh, I think rational person would say that that instruction gives you the right to fake multiple results. So that's where we get into the conversation of tabletop role playing games, fun versus balance, because this is an argument that I have always had with this friend when it comes to tabletop role playing games as well. I have always been a rules as written kind of guy, and he's always been a fun is more important than rules kind of guy. And not only did I already explain that I think that the way that games exist, the way that game rules exist is a the outcome of the playtesters and designers of the game knowing what the pitfalls uh, of the game are. But also, my personality is such that when I sit down to play a game, I'm the type of person, even if it's not a competitive game, I want to know what the rules are. And I want to know that everyone else at the table are abiding by the same rules, even in a non-competitive circumstance. And I'll tell you a time when trying to step outside of the rules burnt me. And it was when I was uh, running this role playing game. All right. It's time to come out. Come on out, buddy. It's your time to shine. There he is. This role playing game. All oh, right here. Corporation. It's basically uh, a cyberpunk inspired modern uh, role playing game. And I don't know if anyone else has ever come across this problem because I have multiple examples of the shotgun issue. <laughs> and I'll tell you what I mean by that. The time that I decided to not play in the raw uh, was a time that I was running a uh, corporation and corporation, as I said, is a modern uh, cyberpunk inspired game. And it has uh, rules for a bunch of uh, firearms. It has rules uh, for shotguns. But what it doesn't have rules for is combat shotguns or um, automatic uh, shotguns where or auto fire shotguns, which really exist in the real world, shotguns that you press the you press the trigger and shells are spit out. And I had a player come to me once and say, 
hey, uh, this game doesn't have any uh, combat or uh, fully automatic uh, shotguns. Can we have that? And knowing what the uh, action economy of the game was and how incredibly lethal normal shotguns were in the game, it sent up a red flag and I started to get that rules as written itch. But the player talked me into allowing him to stat out using the uh, auto fire rules of the game and the shotgun rules a shotgun that could exist in a technology level much less than <laughs> we uh, the, than the game was uh, taking place in. And I allowed him to use it. And quickly, it, it turned out that my um, concerns were fully realized. The combat or automatic, uh, or fully automatic shotgun was a nightmare. It was an incredibly dangerous, an unbalancing weapon in the game. And some would say, yes, shotguns and especially fully automatic shotguns are incredibly dangerous weapons. And, and I would agree. However, the game's um, style and flavor of being somewhat of a pulpy high action game didn't have that level of lethality and the combat shotgun was mysteriously missing from the list. So I think that the creators of the game were going with a style um, and an intention where the game was not as deadly and that combat shotgun, I have to say, completely unbalanced the game. And um, again, I don't know if you've experienced this in any of the modern games that you've played, but also my friend who caused this conversation around the uh, around the card, Malkavian game, he was running a post-apocalyptic game of Savage Worlds. And I wasn't in that game, but I heard that he allowed the players to get hold of a shotgun and it completely <laughs> imbalanced the game. Of course, his tendency is to put fun in front of balance, and it completely overwhelmed the game, just like I experienced with Corporation, the tabletop role-playing game. So that is, is an example of why I am very, very um, leery of playing outside of the raw because I have seen, and even my friend who encouraged uh, to put fun over balance in, a, in um, Vampire the Eternal Struggle has seen that when you go outside of the design of the game, it can have disastrous effects on your game. But I will say that once I become really familiar with the game, I definitely feel more comfortable with breaking um, the rules. If there is a rule that I don't like or that doesn't make sense, once I understand the game, I'm really comfortable with changing the rules. It's just that I don't like to do it. Definitely don't like to do it early before I completely understand the game. And unfortunately, with Corporation, I knew that the combat shotgun was going to completely unbalance the game because I really understood uh, the action economy and the firearm rules. And I knew that though a combat shotgun could logically exist in that setting, that the reason that it wasn't in the game is because it would be completely unbalanced. So what do you do? Uh, do you put fun over balance in your role playing games? Do you allow your players to have more fun by allowing them to break the rules to have the game be more enjoyable or is balance more important to you in a role playing game? And what do you think about Malkavian game? Do you understand Vampire the Eternal Struggle enough to say the players falsifying outcomes of rock, scissors, paper until they get to a particular amount of blood that they are playing for? Is that what the card was uh, was meant to do? Um, let me know in the comments below. Uh, thank you for uh, checking out this video. And as always, in the description below, you can find the link to the PDF of my high fantasy tabletop role playing game, Peace the RPG. Uh, until April 30th, if you go to the website, 
PeaceTheRPG.com, P-E-A-C-E, as in love and peace, PeaceTheRPG.com, and subscribe to my website. On May 1st, I will be doing a drawing, and one lucky subscriber will win a copy of the 280-page basic edition of the game. I'm going to send that to one lucky subscriber. So check out the PDF, see if you like the game, and then subscribe to the website, PeaceTheRPG.com, for a chance to win a uh, copy of the basic edition of uh, the game. We're going to be kickstarting the game in the future. Thanks for checking out this video. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever and whenever you are watching the video. Talk to you later.